As an equity analyst at JP Morgan, EBIT was my go-to measure for understanding company's operating performance. But what makes EBIT so powerful and how it is different from other profitability measures? Hi, I am Dheeraj Vaid, the co-founder of Wall Street Mojo, and in this video, I'll explain you why EBIT is a cornerstone of financial analysis. Let's dive in. So what is EBIT? EBIT is nothing but the earnings before interest and taxes. It's as simple as that. But how about the intuitive understanding of EBIT? So for that, let's look at this income statement closely. Okay, so here we have the sales as $10,000 and the net income as $1,200. Now, I want you to imagine this whole income statement and divide that into two parts. Okay, the separation will happen at this place at the operating profit level. So all the items above this line, that is sales, cost of goods sold, gross profits, selling general and admin expenses, depreciation and amortization expense, all of these are called as the operating level items. So what I mean by this is that all of these items which are above this line are because of the core operations of the business, right? So think of sales. The company is selling products. That's how they are generating revenues. Cost of goods sold is nothing but the direct expense because of the sales. SG&A expense is selling general and admin expenses. Depreciation and amortization is nothing but the assets which you buy in order to do sales, right? So the assets will get depreciated over a period of time. Again, operating expense. So all of these expense are nothing but the main business activities, right? Now, think of the items which are below this line. There's one that is the interest expense, right? This is nothing but the financing activity. Okay, because financing means how much amount of debt the company has. And because of that, you know, the company has to pay uh, interest every year or every quarter, right? And the next item is the taxes. What are taxes? Taxes is what you pay to the government and is calculated as a fixed percentage of your EBT, right? So if you look at this income statement again, we said it's divided into two parts and intuitively EBIT is nothing but the operating profit that is generated because of the core business activities. So here, operating profit is nothing but your EBIT or earnings before interest and taxes. And intuitively, always think of it, it's the profit that is generated because of the business activities, right? Because all the numbers which are below this is independent of the business activities. You know, it's because of the debt or because of the tax, right? So that's how you interpret EBIT. Let us now look at EBIT calculations. So there are two methods through which we can calculate EBIT. Both the methods will result in the same number for EBIT. But let's look at uh, what those are. The first one is the bottom-up approach. Okay. Now, what happens in the bottom-up approach is that you start from the bottom. That is the net income. And the other one is called as the top-down approach. Now, in the top-down approach, you basically start with the sales, right? So, you'll start from the top. Now, let's discuss the first one, that is the bottom-up approach. Now, here what happens is, we are trying to calculate earnings before interest and taxes, right? So, here we will start with the net income and then we will add back interest and taxes, these two things. 500 is the taxes and 1000 is your interest. When we add these two back, we will get earnings before interest and taxes, right? So, let me just write it down, net income plus taxes plus interest, okay? So, this is our formula for EBIT when we use bottom-up approach. So, what will be the answer? Let's calculate that as well. So, this will be 1200 plus taxes is 500 and your interest is 1000, okay? So, we get 2700 as your EBIT, okay? Now, let us look at the second approach, that is the top-down approach, okay? Now, in this case, we'll start with sales and then we start deducting all the operating or the business activity-related expenses, right? So, cost of goods sold will be another one, the sg &A expense, depreciation and amortization. So, what we get essentially is the EBIT or the earnings before interest and taxes, right? So, 
here we will write the formula like this sales minus COGS minus SGNA expense minus your depreciation minus amortization. So please note here that this is limited. This formula is kind of limited to only this type of income statement. If there is any other expense, which is business expense, you have to include that as well. All right. So top down approach and bottom up approach, both of them will essentially give you the same answer. Now, I'm not doing the calculations here for the sales minus COGS because these are already done, right? Sales minus COGS is gross profit. Gross profit minus SGNA expense, depreciation, amortization. We get to the operating profit and we say that this is basically what EBIT is all about. Now, let me clarify one very important point here. Operating profit and EBIT, though we have said that they are equal, it is only equal under certain conditions. Now, that condition is if other expenses or income is zero. Now, what do I mean by this is that let's say if uh, we are talking about the same income statement and let me just uh, modify this a bit. Okay. And uh, let me introduce this item called as other income. All right. Now, let's say the other income was $200. All right. Now, in this case, the EBIT is not equal to operating profit because there is this presence of other income. So, the, in this case, the modified formula for EBIT becomes like this. EBIT is equal to net income plus taxes plus interest plus other income. Okay. And if there was other expense, then you deduct it from that. Right. So, that's how the formula is modified and this is the correct formula. All right. Please remember, this is the correct formula and this is the one that you should use. In the earlier case, since other income and expenses was zero, yeah, your operating profit and uh, EBIT were literally the same. But in this case, it won't be anymore because this will be now equal to your 2700 which you got earlier plus your $200, right? So your modified or adjusted EBIT is nothing but $2,900. So please remember, operating profit and EBIT, both of them usually are considered to be same, but there is a minor difference. The minor difference is other income or expenses, okay? So this is one thing which I wanted you to understand fully before we move on. Let us now revisit the same question which we asked you during the introduction. Which of the two companies is better at the operating level? I bet you know the answer this time. Now, when we look at this company A, we see that it's making an operating profit of 2700 Now, here there is nothing called as the other expense or the other income. So, this is what we have is basically the EBIT. And while we discussed EBIT, we said that, you know, this whole income statement can be divided into two parts, right? One at the top, which is the, at the operating level and below is basically financing and taxes, right? So, when we are talking about comparing businesses at the operating level, we need to look at the operating profit or the EBIT in this case, right? So, when we look at the EBIT of these two companies, $2,700 for company A versus $3,200 for company B. So, obviously, this is much better as compared to company A, even though both of them have the same net income. Now, the reasons for this could be that if you look at company B, you could see that interest expense for company B is much higher, right? So, this would mean that, you know, they might have taken higher debt and that's resulting in a lower net income, correct? However, if you look at their cost of goods sold, they are kind of doing a better job here because at the operating level, they might be managing their costs in a different way, in a much better way. So at the operating level, yes, they are doing much better. At the financing level, maybe not. Okay. Let us now look at the limitations of EBIT. The very first one is that the depreciation and amortization policies affect EBIT. Now, what do we mean by this is that, let's say we have this two companies, right? Company A and Company B. And one of them, the first one follows straight line method of depreciation. And let's say Company B follows accelerated depreciation method. Now, what is the difference between the two? Straight line depreciation would mean charging a constant depreciation during the useful life, right? 
and uh, when we talk about the accelerated depreciation this would mean we will charge a higher depreciation during the initial years and lower depreciation at the far end of the useful life right so this is how it will work let's assume that because of this depreciation policy changes, these are not comparable, right? Straight line versus accelerated depreciation. Now, let's assume that because of company B following accelerated depreciation method, its depreciation number was different from 200. Let's say it was 800. So, what happens to EBIT now? Now, as you can see, this EBIT is now 2600, right? So, your analysis will totally change. This time you will say that, okay, company A is doing better as compared to company B. So, please be mindful that when we talk about depreciation policies, both the companies should have identical or similar depreciation policies to be compared with. All right. So, another limitation of EBIT is that it fails to provide any inputs on high debt levels. So, this is obvious because when we are talking about EBIT, we are saying that it's a number which is before interest, right? And interest is what helps us understand whether the debt levels is higher or lower. So, if I have to revert back to what the original amount of depreciation was, in this case, we, you know, came to the conclusion that company B is better in terms of EBIT at the operating level and we have no clue what's happening at the interest level. Let's say if this was 15,000, then, you know, obviously we our conclusion would still have been the same that at the operating level, this company is doing good, but at the financing level, there is some issue, right? So that's another limitation of EBIT that you have to be kind of aware of.